Okay, for today's test, I'll be discussing dynamic routing protocol uh, or protocols. There are uh, there are different uh, dynam dynamic routing configuration that you can do on Cisco routers. So remember that uh, the internet is comp composed of uh, multiple routers which is connected to one another. Okay, so dynamic routing protocols have been used in networks since the early 1980s. So the first version of, uh, of, uh, of a dynamic routing protocol is what we call as the RIP or the Routing Information Protocol. Uh, and it was released in 1982. Routing Info Protocol released in 1982, but some of the basic algorithm within the protocol were used on the ARPANET or the Advanced Research Project Agency Network as early as 1969. So what are the roles of dynamic routing protocol? So routing protocols are used to facilitate the exchange of routing information between routers. So remember, the function of a router is to forward traffic at the same time to select the best path. Okay, so routers are configured uh, for you uh, for para ma-define kung ano yung path na dadaanan. And basically, the configuration of each router uh, is shared with other routers. So basically, the, the, the configuration or the information of a router is exchanged uh, or, or are exchanged uh, within uh, different routers. So basically, if there's a, there are changes on a, a particular router, Basically, the, the change on the configuration will be or will be shared to the other routers. So, para ma-define kung, uh, kung a, a, specific, a specific path on the network exists. Okay? So, yun yung purpose of, uh, yung purpose of routers. Okay? So, to forward path. You know, once the, pa the router is configured, so basically, as uh, the path, uh, the configuration uh, de which, uh, defines the path, the possible path on the network. Okay, and if there are changes, so routers updates other routers. Okay, para alam na there is an existing path on the on, on a particular network. Okay, so remember that an, uh, another function of a router is to uh, select the best path on the network. Okay, so routers, uh, routing protocols allow routers to dynamic, dynamically learn information about remote networks and automatically add this information to, to their own routing table. So again, uh, any changes on the on a, on a router, on, on a router, basically, i update niya yung other routers para na define kung there, if if a particular path is is available on on that particular on on, on the network okay so hanapin niya kung ano yung magandang network based on the configuration okay so routers dynamically dynamically, dynamically pass updates okay for example if you have router 1 router 2 and router 3 so basically uh, kung merong changes on router 1, basically it will update router 2, update other routers. Okay? Para kasi uh, uh, other routers will know that there are changes on the, on, on, on the configuration. At the same time also, ma-define if the configuration allows you a, a specific path on the network. Okay? So what is the purpose of the of dynamic routing protocol? So the first is discovering remote networks. So again, uh, if there are changes on a particular router or segment on the network, uh, it will automatically discover, okay, na there's a possible path here, okay? So anibaw nagdagdag ng router, so there there is a possible path on the network. So next is maintaining up-to-date routing information. So basically, it keeps uh, the routing information. So meaning to say, pag sinabing routing information, uh, it holds the possible path or it uh, it holds a database 
of the possible path on the network. So, kung saan yung possible na pwedeng daanan in terms of, uh, uh, dep depending on how you configure the routers. Okay, so next is choosing the best path to destination network. Okay, so again, that's a function of a router to choose the best path on the network. So, it will select the possible best path. Yung pinakamagandang a path on your on the network or going to the destination. So next is having the ability to find a new best path if the current path is no longer available. So basically if the uh, if the if the best path fails, alibang naputol yung link. So it will look for another best path or the new best path on the network. So Basically, the availability of uh, of another path uh, is defined on the configuration of the router. Okay, so basically, yun yung ability of DRP to automatically look for another path if a particular link fails. Okay, so what are the components of a routing protocol? So data structures. So some routing protocols use tables or databases for their operations. So basically, the database or or the routing table or uh, is uh, is saved on the on the on the router's memory or the RAM. So just like computer, so basically there's a RAM which holds the routing information. So next is algorithm. An algorithm is a finite list of steps used in accomplishing a task. Routing protocols use algorithm for processing routing information. And for best path determination, so basically it uses different algorithm uh, for uh, for the best path selection. So basically, it depends on what uh, routing protocol is used uh, para ma define mo kung ano yung best path na dapat daanan ng network traffic. Okay, so next is routing protocol messages. So routing protocol use various types of messages. To discover neighboring routers, exchange routing information, and do other tasks to learn and maintain accurate information about the network. So again, just like what I mentioned, that uh, routers updates one another. So basically, per hour, periodically, uh, routers updates one another. But uh, if there are changes on the network infrastructure, uh, uh, other routers will know that there is an existing uh, configurations and there and there may be an existing new path on the network. Okay, so th those are the components of routing protocol, data structure, algorithm, and routing protocol messages. So these are the routing protocol messages. Okay, so routers updates one another uh, with any changes on the network or the configuration. Okay, uh, here are example of uh, dynamic routing protocol. We have the Enhanced Interior Gateway Routing Protocol, or the EIGRP, the Open Shortest Pass First, first or the OSPF, the, the Routing Information Protocol, or the RIP, the Inter Interior Gateway Routing Protocol, or the IGRP. So Intermediate System to Intermediate System, or the ISIS. So these are... Uh, Examples of uh, dynamic routing protocols that you can configure, especially in Cisco. Okay, so what are the benefits and or features uh, uh, using a dynamic versus static routing? Okay, so in terms of uh, when you say static routing, basically uh, you configure the router to to have the specific path to your destination. So basically, you define the path. Okay, again, static routing, uh, you define a specific path. Okay, so basically, if that path fails, you have to reconfigure another path. Okay, unlike with the dynamic routing protocol, basically, it automatically looks for a specific path on the, or uh, the best path on the network. Uh, if the if the particular best path or, or best path fails, basically it will look for the for another best path on the network. You don't need to reconfigure. Okay? So for the configuration complexity, generally independent on of the network size. 
Okay, since uh since yun nga uh routers updates one another with uh, different uh, with their configurations and changes on the network. So basically, it is independent of the network size. So no matter how big it is, basically, wala kang problema because routers updates one another with any configurations or changes on the network. So pag sa static routing kasi, the configuration becomes, becomes complex because syempre, uh, you are defining the path. Imagine, imagine nyo if you have so many routers to configure, to define the path. So, masyadong matarbaho yon on the part of the network engineer or uh, administrator uh, to configure specific path with so many routers. Okay? So, in terms of required administrator knowledge, advanced knowledge is required. So, basically, there are, uh, uh, there are needed configuration knowledge na dapat alam na dapat na, uh, na, na, na dapat matutunan uh, for static routing no extra knowledge required okay so uh, you're going to do static routing configuration uh, on your laboratory and other dynamic routing protocols okay topology changes automatically adapts to topology topology changes so again, because routers updates one another, so there's no problem if there are changes in the topology or network infrastructure. So basically, uh, routers again updates one another with the changes of their information or configuration. So for static routing, so if you go to change the topology, basically you have to redefine the configuration because you are defining a stat static route or static path. So that's the problem with static routing. Next is scaling. So is it uh, is it scalable, suitable for simple and complex topologies? Okay. So basically, you can use it on a. Uh, it's easier for you to configure on a simple and a more complex topology. So same as well with the configuration complexity. So no matter how big the size is, remember that routers updates one another on a dynamic routing protocol. So, yung static routing is only suitable for simple topologies. Okay? So, yun nga, because you are defining the path, you are configuring routers one by one to define the path. So, basically, if you're, if you're going to have a very large topology, network topology, so, you have to configure so many routers just to define the path. Okay? So, that's the problem with static routing. Security, less secure. So, basically, since uh, network adapts to the changes, so, hindi mo na define if the path is valid. Okay? So, if the, if the path is... Um, if the added device on the network is valid or it will it, it 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 will not cause problem to the network okay so unlike with static routing since you define the router syempre you know kung ano yung nilalagay mong router on the infrastructure okay uh, because on the dynamic routing protocol routers learn uh, changes on the network okay next is resource usage Use a CPU memory and link bandwidth. So remember that routers exchanges uh, routing information or the uh, routing configuration or changes on the network. So basically, it consumes bandwidth and CPU and memory. So static routing, since you define the configuration on the router, so basically, there's no extra resources needed. Okay? So there's no exchange of router information or routing information on the network. Next is predictability. Route depends on the current topology. So basically, yun nga, uh, routers only adapts or the route or different routes on the network is based on the topology. So automatically, it will adapt if, any, if there are any changes. So halimbawa, nag-add ng another router and this is this Newly added router gives the, the, the best path to your destination. 
So basically, it will automatically adapt, uh, adjust, uh, 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 adjust, or uh, autom autom it automatically uh, updates other routers of this existing new router that will provide you the best path to your destination. So static routing, since you define the route, so basically it's always the same unless you reconfigure, okay? So classifying dynamic routing protocols. Routing protocols can be classified into different groups according to their characteristics. So we have the IGP or the interior gateway protocol or the EGP or the exterior Gateway protocol. We have the distance vector or link state and the classful or classless. Okay, so we have the interior gateway protocols used for intra autonomous system routing, that is the routing inside an autonomous system. So we have also the exterior gateway protocol used for inter autonomous system routing, that is routing between autonomous system. Okay, so basically we have autonomous systems. So basically, uh, these are set of routers. So let's say, for example, this is uh, autonomous system 100. So basically, this is uh, these are our set of routers which are which are handled by a single organization. Let's say, for example, a telco company. Uh, manages this set of uh, or uh, manages or, or administers this set of routers and let's say for example another organization or autonomous system let's say autonomous system 200 is managed by another organization when we talk about IGP or the interior gateway protocol these are the protocol examples are RIP, IGRP, EIGRP and OSPF which falls under IGP so basically these are the protocol that you can use on an inter on an inter autonomous system ibig sabihin inside the autonomous system these are the protocol na pwede niyo gamitin so basically if you have two different autonomous system or two different sets of uh, routers with routing policies and handled by different organization so for you to be able to have connectivities so basically you will you, you will be using the exterior exterior gateway protocol and one good example of, uh, of a dynamic routing protocol uh, under EGP is the border gateway border gateway protocol or the BGP. Okay, so basically, so basically the exterior uh, gateway protocol allows you to have communication or link between two different autonomous systems, okay? So, that's why it is called exter uh, ex uh, ex exterior gateway protocol. So, it links uh, different autonomous systems uh, together, okay? So, unlike with IGP, those are protocols which can, you can only use uh, inside uh, an autonomous system. Okay, so we have also the distance vector and link state routing protocol. When you talk about distance vector routing protocol, so basically, uh, distance vector means that routes are advertised as vectors of distance and direction. So, distance is defined in terms of a metric such as half count. So, yung tinatawag na half count, uh, basically, it is the number of routers before you, reaches, before you reach the destination. For example, you have three routers before... Let's say this is the server and this is the computer. Okay, so basically this is what you call as the half count. The number of routers kung saan dadaan yung network traffic nyo. Okay, so this is what you call as the uh, half count. So next is direction is simply the next half neck router or an exit interface. So if this is the, the source, so basically this is your exit interface to your router. So, going to another router, this is your exit interface. So, basically, the exit interface defines the direction of your or the path of your network traffic. Okay? So, basically, that's uh, the distance vector. Kapag distance vector kasi siya, so, basically, it will look for the best path, path based on the, 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 the smallest number of hops on the 
network before you reach the destination. Okay, so the next one is link, link state protocol or uh, link state pro routing protocol. So basically, the routing protocol, the link state routing protocol can create a complete view or topology of the network by gathering information from all other routers. Think of using a link state routing protocol as having a complete map of the network topology. So basically, it, uh, the best path selection for a link state protocol depends on the topology. Okay, so we have the classful routing protocol. So basically, pag sinabing classful routing protocol, these are protocols na pwede nyo lang gamitin, uh, ang, na pwede nyo lang gamitan ng uh, if the network address is a classful network address. And one example of a routing protocol under the classful routing protocol is the RIP or the routing information protocol. Okay, so... The RIP, uh, the network addresses are allocated based on the class A, B, or C. A routing protocol did not need to include the subnet mask. Okay, so basically, uh, the RIP uh, without the subnet mask because this that uh, it it will treat the the configured IP address, uh, the network address or the network address on the configuration uh, as class A, B, or C. So basically, on the configuration, subnet mask is not necessary. Okay, so if you have the classful, we have the classless routing protocol. Okay, pag sinabi natin classless routing protocol, so basically, uh, it allows you to configure uh, not just the classful IP, classful A, B, or C, but also the uh, subnetted network addresses or subnet addresses. Okay, like uh, the RIP, version 2, EIGRP, OSPF, ISIS, and BGP. So these are examples of classless routing protocol. Okay, so the most commonly used routing protocols are as follows, RIP, so a distance vector. So basically, it. Uh, so the best path determination is the num the distance or the number of hops. Same as well with the IGRP, it's a distance vector also. So OSPF is a link state. So basically, pag sinami natin link state, is the quality of the link. The EIGRP, so advanced distance vector din siya. Uh, the BGP, a path vector exterior routing protocol. Okay, so we have the metrics or the term metrics. So metrics are a way to measure or compare. Routing protocols use metrics to determine which route is the best path. Okay, so it tinatawag the metrics is the the measurement of a particular link uh, para ma consider ito na uh, ito yung pinaka best path to the destination. Okay, so different routing protocols use different metrics. The metric used by one routing protocol is not comparable to the metric used by another. Routing protocol. So basically, uh, different routing protocols do have different metrics. Okay, so what are the metrics used in IP routing protocols? So we have the hop count. So a simple metric that counts the number of routers a packet must traverse. So just like what I've discussed kanina, the, the hop count is the number of routers na dadaanan ng inyong network traffic. So the bandwidth influences path selection by preferring the path with the highest bandwidth. So basically, uh, the dynamic routing protocol may use the bandwidth as its metric. Uh, ang, ha, ang kukuha niya is the, yung pinakamataas na bandwidth on the network. Uh, no matter gaano ka dami yung hop niya, pero ito yung mas mabilis in terms of bandwidth. So ito yung mas pipili niya. So next is load. Consider the traffic utilization of a certain link. So basically, ito naman tinitignan niya yung network traffic. So basically, kung masyadong overloaded tong path na to, whether it's the shortest path based of the, on the hop count, pero madami namang dumadaan na data. So basically, mas ko consider na yung uh, path which do have a lower or a lower load in terms of network utilization or traffic utilization. So the next delay considers the path, the time a path, a packet takes to, to traverse a path. Okay, so basically, uh, when you talk about the delay, the time interval for 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 the for your packet 
uh, for your for your data to travel from your source to the destination. So, ano ba yung mas mabilis? So, no matter how what's the bandwidth or baka mamaya masyado mahaba yung cable on a particular link. So, basically, that's one consideration in terms of metric, the delay. Next is reliability. So, pag sinabing reliability, it will look for a reliable uh, network link. So, minsan kasi there are, conne- there are connections na unstable. So, basically, if a particular path is unstable, it will look for another path which is more reliable. Okay, so next is cost of value determined either by the iOS or by the network administrator indicate, indicate per Preference for a route. Cost can represent a metric, combination of metric, or a policy. So basically, uh, pwede mo i-define yung, uh, or define kung anong metrics yung gagamitin mo depending on the dynamic routing protocol na ginamit mo or a combination of different metrics. Okay? So this is one good example of uh, best uh, path de- the determination. Path determination. So, for example, if this is PC1 and PC2, so if you're going to use the routing information protocol and RIP chooses shortest path based on hop count, so basically, uh, the best path here is from here, from router 1 to router 2, papunta sa PC2. Okay? If you are using the routing information protocol and configure it on the router because it chooses the best path based on the hop count or the number of routers. Kasi ang dadaanan lang niya is two routers, router 1 and router 2. Unlike if, you, if your traffic will go here, you have R2, R1, R3, and R2. You have three routers. So this is mas malayo siya in terms of number of routers or hop count. Okay. But if you're going to use OSPF, if you if you're going to configure the router using OSPF uh, or the open shortest path first, uh, path, per, path path first uh, OSPF on the configuration, so it chooses shortest path based on the bandwidth. So kung mapapansin yon, this is 56 kbps only. And this is a T1 connection or a least line connection. For example, this is a least line connection. So basically, mas mabilis yung bandwidth nito papunta sa PC2. Okay? So basically, that's... Uh, so regardless of the number of hops, kung mas mabilis naman yung bandwidth on a, on, a, on a specific path, doon siya dadaan. Okay, it automatically defines the path based on the routing protocol na ginamit nyo. So again, if RIP is being used, the the path is here. And kung OSPF yung gagamitin mo, because the metrics used for OSPF is the bandwidth, so basically, ito siya. Okay, so just to, def- uh, to summarize what is the metric used for different routing protocol? For the RIP, we have the hop count. Okay, for the IGRP or EIGRP, we have the bandwidth, delay, reliability, and load, or basically the quality of the link. For ISPF and OSPF, cost or the combination of different Uh, of, of different metrics. Okay? So, those are different dynamic routing protocol and basically, you'll be doing different configurations using dynamic routing protocol in your laboratory. Okay? Okay, so that will be all for my lesson for today.